United Artists Channel 63 presents the United Artists Sports High School Football Game of the Week. Tonight from Ferndale High School, it's the Andover Barons taking on the Ferndale Eagles. Good evening, everyone. Dave Zorn along with Bob Griglag here from Hanson Field in Ferndale. And tonight, the Ferndale Eagles have their uh, work cut out for them. They are 1-4 and four going against a team that is 4-1, and one, Bob. A big difference in the records, obviously, but a big difference is returning players. You're going to see uh, three returning starters uh, for Ferndale, and, of course, most of the team is back for Avondale. So big difference there and a big difference, hopefully, uh, in the scores. Okay, and a big offensive team for Andover. They've uh, uh, totaled 1,000 yards offensively rushing, uh, over 500 yards passing this year, so a pretty good attack for Andover. They look for a balanced attack, and I think a lot what they do is out of the wing formation. They'll throw a lot on the run, roll the quarterback out, and you'll see a lot of uh, quarterback movement today. On the other side of the ball, you're going to see basically a, a straight eye, fullback uh, dives and trap plays. So it'll be an interesting game. Okay. We'll be back with the kickoff of tonight's game right after these messages. Stay with us. When we learn, the world is rich with possibilities, and school is where our dreams take flight. A great novel gets its start. A president they call us. A language is discovered. A new generation of scientists explore. United Artists Cable is building a partnership with America's schools through an innovative project, Cable in the Classroom, sending programs designed exclusively for the classroom, providing new data and software tools. Teachers, parents, and United Artists Cable together, enriching the tools of education. A commitment to this community that each of us at United Artists Cable is proud to be part of because excellence in education benefits every one of us. Join us for Cable in the Classroom! Brought to you by United Artists Cable, partners in Cable in the Classroom and contributing to the tools of education. Welcome back to Hanson Field here at Ferndale High School where the Ferndale Eagles host the Andover Barons. And tonight, uh, a cool night, a great night for football, Bob. Couldn't be better, about 53 degrees, little wind, uh, field's in great condition, and both teams are ready to play. Last year, uh, these two teams uh, had some, uh, uh, I would say, pretty good seasons. This year, we can see that they're pretty much opposite each other. Exactly opposite each other. Yep. And over four and one, a very good season. Ferndale one and four, having a rough start and a lot of seniors graduating last year. They had a five and four record. And on the other side, uh, Andover uh, had a one and eight record. So he has some uh, seasoned veterans, if you will, on that squad this year, and that accounts for the four and one. Well, similar to the records, uh, the returning players are the same situation. Three returners for. Ferndale and basically the whole team for Andover. And that, that's a good reason why the records are, are like they are. Uh, more starters uh, have more experience and that'll make a big difference. There's Ferndale. They're ready. Uh, we're about ready to kick off here. And the Eagles uh, they've got to be ready. Taking on right there you see the head coach and that is John Brooks with the headset on. He, uh, very, he is very excited about his team this year. Yes, he's uh, really into the statistics of the team. Of course, that might have to do with his new computer. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, he knows what his players can do. He has a good idea what their uh, capabilities are. And I think he's going to try to stretch it to the limit. Okay. Andover will kick off to the Eagles to start it off. Bill Allward back in the middle for... Ferndale and kicking off is number 84 Matt Robbins. Robbins will also do the field goal kicking. Robbins kicks it short to number 8 and that is taken by Morgan. David Morgan brought down at about the 30 yard line and that is where the Ferndale Eagles will start on their first possession and the first possession of the game. There you see head coach John Bazier for the Ferndale Eagles. I think Robbins just wanted to get that ball up as high as he can to get good coverage. Uh, he's got a stronger leg than that. We were talking to uh, the coaching staff earlier before the game, and they were saying, uh, as John Brooks was saying, that he has a strong leg and has the potential to kick field goals up to 
40, 45 yards. So we'll see more of him later in the game. He'll do both the punting and the kick. The quarterback is Carlos Griffin for the Eagles. Their backs are Bill Allward and James Gatewood. And right off the bat, taking it is Morgan. Correction, number four, the quarterback Griffin on a keeper and gained some pretty good yardage on a first down carry, Bob. Yeah, just a straight fake dive up the middle. They're trying, uh, Andover's going to look for the dive play, and if they fake it enough, uh, they'll have to have the ends pinch in. The ends didn't pinch in that time. He got around and uh, made a nice game. Looks like second down in about three or four. The Ferndale Eagles, second and four. Carlos Griffin, the quarterback. They run a full tee occasionally and offensive movement by number 64. And the first penalty of the game, that is uh, DeRocia. No excuse for that, just didn't know the count. Uh, he's a junior, six foot, 205 pounds, so uh, he needs to make up for that and maybe open up a hole. You can see him right here. They go down the three point and he just doesn't know the snap. There he goes. Yep. Nobody else moved, but he did. Consequently, so that, a penalty. And knocks him back instead of a second and four now. It is second and eight. An awfully deep huddle for Ferndale. I'm surprised that they're going as far deep as they are. High formation in the backfield. Two receivers down at the bottom of the screen. If one slants in, we've got an interception. Off the hands of number 20, Allward. Allward tipped it up, and it was intercepted down there. Juby Falcon. Yep. Well, we were to talking to Coach John Brooks earlier, and uh, Juby is one of their key players. He plays a lot on defense. He's inside linebacker. And right here, the, the end just comes in on a quick slant. He hits him, but the ball hit off his hands and right into Juby's hands, who makes a little bit of a run here, but is tackled pretty much after he caught the ball. So a big turnover for the Eagles on their first possession, and here come the Barons. And a big carry by... Valdiviso, Valdiviso on the carry and a gain of uh, about a couple yards. The quarterback is Griff Russell. The Bears have a pretty decent sized offensive line. I think what they're going to try to do today is just try to wear out the defense of Ferndale. Uh, and again, as long as they keep running the ball and keep getting first downs, they don't have to throw. In motion, number 32, Julie Falcon, who made the interception. Throwing and just out of the hands of number 84, Robbins, and a good defensive play down there by the Falcon, number 88, and that was Mel Mel Niffin down there. Dave, that ball should never have been thrown. Uh, it was play action. It did not freeze anybody. Didn't fake anybody out. They were looking for it, and actually, the defensive player had a better chance of that ball than the offensive receiver. So the Ferndale Eagles defense standing tough now, third and about eight. As Russell drops back again, rolls out in trouble, finds his open man, has the first down, and may have more. Touchdown. No flags down, and the Andover Barons score quickly here in the first quarter on a big turnover. Andy Phillips, a tight end who has uh, compiled 183 yards this season on 12 receptions, and that is his fourth touchdown of the season. Bob. You're going to see a beautiful play by the quarterback right here. He makes a nice fake. Now watch him step up in the pocket. This is what makes this play work. He steps up and throws on the run, hits Phillips on the run, and Phillips makes a nice run right here to get around. Could have been a, could have been a clip there on num uh, against number 88 of the other team. I don't know, but nothing was called, no flags, and the touchdown is good. The Barons get on the board first, thanks to a turnover by the Eagles and kicking. Robbins makes it good, and it is 7 0. That's 17 in a row for Robbins on extra points. He's been very consistent. He's got uh, one for one so far this year in field goals. There's our score and over 7, and Ferndale 0. We're still early here in the first quarter. Well, talking to John Brooks before the game, he said they uh, will pass and they will go to the favorite receiver, Andy Phillips. All receptions this year, it's a big yardage. As you mentioned, uh, they're, they're doing about two-thirds run, a third pass, but he'd like to see that more of 50-50. Uh, whether it be yardage or attempts, we, don't, we can't say. But right now, his pass is working, and if he can use the run to set up the pass, he'll do it. And Andover will kick again. Thank you. 
Don't forget to tune in for the Road Show video program Saturday and Monday nights at 9 p.m. right here on United Artists 63. And to kick off, here is that. Let's move that. Nice little move provided by Pat Collar. And taking it. Number 35 for the Eagles and a big run outside by James Burrell. Burrell now. The drive took a total of 34 yards, 31 of them through the air on the pass play. And three plays, 59 seconds, so less than a minute to score after the interception. Not a bad way to start Judy. the game up. Yep. Well, here's Ferndale's second chance to see what they do this time. Again, Carlos Griffin, the quarterback. Two men in the backfield, a hand on a straight dive, and piled up at the line of scrimmage are the Eagles. Not much that time. With 30 on the carry, and that is Michael Thomas. Thomas starting tonight. And it'll be second and 10 coming up now for the Eagles. Number 76 for Andover, Jeff Hahn. He's uh, 6'4", 247. He's going to plug guy. up a lot of the line today. He made, he's in that last tackle. Offensive and defensive tackle, Hahn. Power eye formation. Here's Thomas again, trying to cut outside, and it is strung out well by the Barons. There to clean him up is number 34, Worthland. But stepping up there first is number 50, Hamburger. Dan Hamburger got up there initially to string him out, and then cleaning up, Worthland came in. That was a great play by the linebacker that time. Anytime you run an option or uh, something down the line, the linebacker's going to choose who he's going to take. That time, he chose to, chose to wait for the ball to be pitched because the quarterback had no, no room to go, and he knew it. He took the, the halfback in the backfield and didn't make the tackle, but basically stopped the play. Uh, third down now, and 10. And a passing down for the Eagles. The Eagles intended receiver down there, number 81, uh, Randy St. Laurent, and uh, came up short that time, and a punting down now for the Eagles. Randy's a tight end. He was uh, pretty much wide open that time. He went straight off of the line, uh, didn't get blocked, didn't get uh, hit, and was open. The ball was just overthrown. And the Andover defense is playing without their second leading tackler, John Little. But they are still very stable on the inside linebacker position. Worthland and Juby Falcon doing the job that time. Here to punt is Vineyard, Matt Vineyard. And the Barons will pick it up. Flag is down as number 26, Adam Chick, takes it. Well, he called for a fair catch, and then you can't, you can't advance the ball after you call for a fair catch. So that'll knock him back. Exactly. And that's what the refs are going to discuss right here. Glad to see him here. They came a little late. We were wondering whether we would have some referees for this game. <laughs> the old zebras. And last week, the refs were here and uh, tried to decide on whether we should start the game because well, of the tornado watch. It really wasn't their decision. 7.44 left here in the first quarter. The Andover Barons struck first on a big interception by Juby Falcon, the inside linebacker, tipped up and intended down there for Bill Allward, the back coming out of the backfield. and uh, He was open, too. He was open. Yeah. Just the uh, pass was tipped up in the air and right in the hands of Falcon. Let's take a look at the punt return. Well, you can see his right hand went up. You just saw it at the beginning of the, of, of the replay. His right hand went up, signaling for a fair catch. He cannot advance the ball after that point, and that's what they're discussing right now. Uh, whether What he does after this is inconsequential because uh, you cannot advance it. Now the referees are discussing the penalty with the Falcon captain, one of the defensive captains down there, on what the Falcon, or excuse me, the uh, Eagles want to do. <laughs> Bob's looking for Falcon. Yeah, I was looking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm still thinking of last week's game and how we should have done that. Down there is number 55, David Sabracha. And uh, here's the call from the ref. Let's see what uh, they're going to take. It's a clipping, clipping call. Really clip against the, uh, it's a Barons. clipping call on the Barons, so they're going to knock them back 15 yards. Don't forget to tune in next week. We'll see Rochester Adams against the Royal Oak Dondero Oaks. And that'll be Saturday and Monday night at 7 p.m. right here on United Artists 63. 
Where's that one at, Dave? Uh, the at Don Darrow. At Don Darrow. Oh, great. I'm assuming. Since the visitors Just in case anybody wanted to top. go out and see it, I thought maybe... Well, here's the rule of thumb. The yeah. visitors are usually listed first. Okay. And the home team is usually listed second. I can live with that. Except if you're watching Channel 7. They do it reverse. <laughs> Here we go on the first play of the new drive for the Barons. And it is number 34 on the carry, Worthland. Worthland goes uh, offensively and defensively, and this time does it on a short carry. There you see John Bezier pacing the sidelines, already down 7 nothing, and uh, hoping that he can hold the Andover Barons on this drive right here. Well, he wasn't half to, happy after last week's 35 nothing loss to Rochester. And Rochester and Ferndale are, are comparable teams size-wise, uh, amount of players, talent-wise. It should not have been that high a score. There on the other side, you can see John Brooks right in the middle of your screen, pacing back and forth as well. But uh, his pace a little bit more... Uh, Comfortable, if you will. He's up 7 0 with 7 29 and counting down in the first quarter. First and 15 because of the penalty. As they were knocked back. And it'll be a second and 15 now as the Eagles come up with a big play defensively. Well, what they did that time, Dave, is they brought both of the linebackers in. You can't see it on your screen here. But they're pinching right in the nose tackle. And they push the offensive line backwards. They get a good rush and are able to take the, uh, ball, the ball carrier down before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. You'll be Falcon on the carry. And it'll be second and 15 again. Nothing on the carry. One man in the backfield. And now the man in motion is Valdivieso. Passing again downfield and almost intercepted down there by Niffin, Mel, Mel Niffin. Almost intercepted that. It was just short of the intended receiver. Throwing into double coverage here, Bob. Well, he's having a hard time seeing his receivers right here because a lot of the players are taller than him. I mean, that's the basic reason. Another reason is look at the rush. The rush is in his face. He overthrows that ball by a good 10 yards. Right there, way over his head. He's throwing to his spot and does not hit his receiver. Oh, okay, so uh, really could have been uh, caught by two receivers because uh, he had one receiver going in the same direction just uh, ahead yes. of the intended receiver. And that is why it was almost intercepted because of the defenders in the area. Back to pass, Russell going deep. He's got his man, it is complete. Andy Phillips again, the tight end. Well, when you've got a receiver, 6'2", 192, no wonder he's one of your favorite receivers. He looks a little bit bigger than that, I'll tell you. Maybe <laughs> He does. You're going to see a good arm right here, and he has a lot of time to throw the ball. This is going to make a difference. Here he goes, steps up, and gets the ball deep. Let's Phillips run under the ball. Actually, Phillips might have even came back for a little bit. Yep, he had to wait for it. The defender basically did not look for the ball, because if he did, he had a chance to knock it down. Ball at the 47-yard line of the Barons. First and 10 now. Handing off to the reverse man, and that was Valdivieso, gain of about two yards. A little counterplay that time, basically a little misdirection, trying to fake to the middle, send the uh, tailback uh, off to the right. Blocking broke down and uh, consequently very little gain. 6.18 left. So we got a penalty on the play, In the first Dave. quarter and another penalty. So this is against Andover. Andover has picked up a few penalties now, and... Uh, he started off with a clip and then uh, received another one. Block below the waist, white. First. Okay. A block below the waist on Andover, and that'll knock him back quite a bit. Let me explain that rule to our viewers. Uh, about 15 years ago, it, it was legal to block below the waist. In other words, you could not, you could crack back block is basically what we're looking at. Uh, at that time, a lot of injuries, and the council basically voted that. Uh, you cannot block below the waist on the line of scrimmage. And that knocks him back 15 yards. It'll be, or excuse me, 20 yards. 25. First and 23. And on the carry. Aren't you going to ask me how I knew that rule? How did you know that rule, Bob? I was playing back then. <laughs> Let's take a look. And this time he turns around, hands the ball off, gets out of the way, and watch this. Knew where to go. He actually runs into his own man, makes a nice spin, but then runs into the defense, and uh, then he stopped. Fumbles the ball after the play, but uh, he was down. 5.40 left in the first quarter. It'll be second down and about 22 now. Only a yard on that carry by Falcon. That's why I'm saying Here Falcon. Here comes. 
Russell throwing deep. He's got a man wide open. It's Phillips. And Phillips shakes a tackler. And it's down to two number 88s. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Oh, what a play. I'll tell you, that play was almost a disaster and turned out to be a great play. I can't believe it. Niffin was the last man to uh, try to get him. Let's take a look now again. Now watch this. He's almost sacked right here. Watch 81. He is right on him. I don't know how he didn't get him in time, but he got the ball off, got the ball to Phillips, and then watch Phillips run. Just turn it up. He's on a linebacker, so he's got some speed difference there. Turn Ratchy it up. almost had him, and here's Niffin right before he gets in the end zone and yes he does he stretches out the knee did not hit here's the extra point it is up it is good and the barons lead now 14 to nothing good job by the holder that time the ball was a bad snap picked the ball up off the ground put it down and 18 in a row now at 5 19 left in the first quarter there's your score again russell to phillips I hope for Ferndale's sake that they can come back and put some points on the board right here. After losing 35 to nothing last week, boy, I tell you, they need something to get going. Don't forget to tune in to Transition right here on United Artists 63 every Saturday at 10 p.m. with host Jeff Miller. That's Transition. There you see number three on the Eagles, and uh, that is Bernard Harris. What can you do in the backfield when you got a great receiver there Andy Phillips well they made the right call on defense it's just a split second uh, difference was the difference between a sack and a touchdown Robbins to kick off he kicks it over to the sideline it is still in and now goes out of bounds and they'll kick it over or they can take it let's see where are they going to take it take it at that spot they can they take want. it at the 35 right Number of plays, five. Time of possession, 236, and a total yards on that drive. 75 yards on five plays, not eating up much of the clock. That's because that passing game, they uh, are very successful. Russell has hit Ro uh, Phillips twice for two touchdowns, and Phillips had three coming into the game. Michael Williamson on that kickoff, by the way, if that ball would have bounced straight up, that's a live ball. Yeah. <laughs> and yep. he took a chance because they were coming. They were maybe five, six yards away when that ball bounced. And anything could have happened. The ball went out at the 34. They said they're going to take it there rather than uh, trying to get another kickoff and returning it. I formation in the backfield. Griffin, the quarterback, handing off to the tailback, Thomas. And Thomas struggling to get back to the original line of scrimmage and does, and it'll be second and ten. The Juby Falcon made a great play at linebacker that time. He swung outside. The defensive end actually made the play because he shot up and forced him to turn inside. When he did, Falcon was there to make the tackle. Good defense. No gain on the play. Second down. 4.55 left in the first quarter. There you see some of the fans here. Just inside the 30 Hanson Field. We're at Ferndale High School, the Ferndale Eagles hosting the Andover Barons. I guess he gained a yard. No, they gave him a, they gave him a yard? A yeah, half yard. I don't think so. <laughs> I formation again. Griffin to pass. He's going to take off. And he gained about five yards. And he finally brought down there on the tackle was Feinberg. Well, his uh, excellent defense that time. All the receivers were covered. He just took the ball down and ran it upfield and got as much as he could. Looks like he got about four or five yards on the play. And it was a good, smart play by the quarterback that time because if he, he otherwise he'd just throw the ball away. And they are not a passing team. Carlos Griffin is uh, primarily a running quarterback. As we see right here, he takes it again himself, gets the first down, and maybe a yard or two more. So Carlos Griffin picks up the first first down for the Eagles. Well, it was a good play for the sake they got a first down, but it's bad for the sake that if you have to depend on your quarterback running every play, it's going to end up in disaster later on. Either he'll get hurt, he'll uh, get his hands hit a lot, he'll have trouble throwing the ball. There's a lot of bad things that can happen when the quarterback carries the ball a lot. Not very many pro quarterbacks last long if they run. 
Well, ask Rodney Pete. He's yeah. running the option in the pros. Yeah, he sure is getting hit a lot. <laughs> he is getting beat up quite a bit. Good thing he's got that week off. 328 and counting down as a full house in the backfield and breaking through for a first down. And probably the biggest carry, Bill Allward, on a big run for the Falcons. Excuse me, the Eagles. That play took what a second. throws me off. It's the yeah. Scooby Falcon. He's on the end over. Yeah, the Falcons on. Yeah. Don't forget to tune in for front page football if you're a football fanatic. The hosts. Kurt Sylvester and Mike O'Hara talk to Detroit Lions every Saturday night, 6.30 p.m., right here on United Artists 63. Is that just before our game? Uh, just before the Lions. Yeah, a little right. bigger game. Not that these aren't big. First and ten, Carlos Griffin gives it to the counter man, which is Thomas. They faked it to the fullback going through and gave it to the man coming around, which was Thomas. I'll tell you what, Dan Hamburger made a great pro-type tackle. Grabbed him by the belt and just threw him down on the ground. I like that. Coming from an ex-linebacker, I can that relate. old-fashioned yeah. football there you go. play, right? There you go. So many years ago, right? Butkus, wasn't he number 50 or something <laughs> like that? Yeah, pretty tough guy. You see John Bezier looking at a second down and 11 now. And counting down to two minutes left in the first quarter. Pitching out, Griffin and almost fumbling the ball is Allward at the last second. Griffin pitched it out. And the ball went right at the helmet of Allward. He brought it down. Let's take a look, Bob. Basically what happens here is the defense makes penetration, forces the quarterback to pitch the ball before he wants to. They sealed off the outside. The tailback took the ball, didn't have a chance. First if he had to catch the ball, otherwise it would have been a fumble. But you're seeing a little different defensive lineman than we've seen here on uh, the game of the week. They're running a 4-4 stunt. So they're going to get in a lot deeper than a lot of teams. High formation in the backfield. Griffin back to pass. He's going to unload down the middle of the field. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Harris. Bernard Harris had it and was hit immediately and dropped the ball with the jarring uh, hit that he took. That was a good offensive call. Uh, play action pass, had time to throw the ball. Receiver was open, everything clicked. You can see right here, he's got plenty of time. And you can see right here, the pass is on target, but boom, he drops the ball. He wasn't hit, he should have caught it. No, no excuse for that. The Eagles to punt. Punting it away is Vineyard. And it goes out of bounds. No return for the Barons. And they flag down a couple of them, as you can see, to the left of the screen. Well, that see what far down, about. it's probably an illegal block or legal use of hands, something like that. All right, Duke. Let's see what we got. Maybe they weren't lined up long enough. Well, let's see if they're going to knock them back even further and try to get a return out of it. Oh, I would probably take the ball right there. Let's see what they do. Illegal procedure, Brown. Less than six men on the line. Less than seven on the line. Fourth down over again. Oh, okay, they're going to take it over. Less than seven on the line. Somebody was uh, just a half a foot behind, probably. Yeah. They're going to want to return this. Is oh, yeah. The thinking here. So Vineyard again to punt. Matt, the senior, gets a bad snap, and he's going to have to run with it. So the, the play works out for the Barons. Like I said, I would have taken it right there. And another flag down, though. <laughs> they didn't have a choice, though. And another flag down. Oh, Let's no. see what happens. Well, I see the unit's changing, so we got holding. Holding. Preliminary call. Hold, Brown, refuse, first down. Okay, that uh, pretty much spells it all out. There's the bad snap right here. You can see it takes three skips, and then he drops the ball. He could have got the punt off if he would have caught it. Tough, tough call with everybody running at you. And uh, good, good break for Andover. Boy, I'll tell you, nothing's going Ferndale's way here. 115 and counting down now left in the first quarter. It's been a long first quarter. Russell, pitching out, nobody there. He was pitching out to the ref. Three ball, and the Eagles pick it up. 
A big turnover. <laughs> what was he thinking? Russell man? was thinking there was somebody there, and he thought he saw someone out of the corner of his eye, but the ref was the only one over there. Well, I don't see, you don't see that very often, I'll tell you that. Uh, Russell's a good quarterback either. Since we don't see it very often, let's see it again. He sees both of his backs go right there. He just saw them go both. Now that I don't understand. Oh, there's 32 back there. Now I think Falcon was probably running the other way. That's that's a good possibility. What a break for Ferdo. I just Eagles. got done saying that they weren't doing. You have yeah. breaks. Now they got one. Great. Eagles with a full team in the back. Faking and taking it himself and paying the price as Juby Falcon hit him right there. Griffin gaining about three yards. It'll be second and seven. Well, they've got to put some points on the board right here. They're down 14 nothing. Mind you, there's a lot of time left. Well, not much in this quarter, 30 seconds and counting, but they have to get on the board. John Bazier giving the signals offensively. Is that what he was doing? Falcons uh, getting a big break now. Yep. So they uh, have a chance now. I think that's what he was doing. I thought he was trying to fly or something. I don't know. No, he is the Eagle coach. <laughs> Griffin back to pass, has a blitz, and unloads too deep. He was hit hard by number 66, John Grondon. Grondon, a sophomore at 5'9", 180, got in there, a defensive end. Randy St. Laurent was on the ground. He might have tripped over somebody's feet. There was no call, but he uh, wanted to unload the ball before he got unloaded. Up. So Griffin now facing a third and seven. And a big down right here for the Eagles. I formation in the backfield. Two receivers split. Thomas up top. And he's looking towards Thomas. Rolling out. Griffin has to unload. And couldn't even get the ball off. Sacked for a big loss. And a fourth down now for the Eagles. Well, as I was talking about in the last series, the last uh, possession for Ferndale, uh, Andover runs a 4-4 stunt. What that basically means, four down linemen, four linebackers. Those linebackers can come at any time. That's the key phrase, any time, and they did that time. At the end of the first quarter, the Andover Barons, 14, and the Ferndale Eagles, nothing. And the Eagles just want to get some kind of an offensive drive going. So they can keep some momentum, but they haven't had that. They've had to punt on every possession so far. Don't forget to tune in to Oakland Forum. That's Thursday at 8.30 p.m. and Friday at 9 p.m. Back-to-back -back nights of Oakland Forum right here on United Artists 63. The Ferndale cheerleaders trying to get to either the warm. team or That's the fans cheered up. Trying to get warm, yeah. too, yeah. It's getting cold now. It is. I got my coat on my lap right now, trying to keep my legs warm. Here's Vineyard to punt. This time has a good snap and gets off a great punt. A great punt that lands at about the 10 yard line. And not much more you can ask from the punter than getting it down to the 10. The uh, return men threw their arm up like they were going to make a catch, but uh, everybody in the stadium and their brother knew the ball was over his head. David Morgan, you see him jogging off. Yeah. He was the man down there. That was a fantastic punt, I'll tell you. A lot of hang time, very deep, and took a great bounce. Well, Matt was saying, just give me a good snap. Let me give That's me a chance all took, to punt it. I'll tell you what, he sure let off a boomer. Last time he had to run for safety. Here comes Griff Russell, number 10. Quarterback handing off to his fullback right up the middle, and that is Worthland. Rob Worthland on the carry. Worthland coming into the game at 347 yards on the season on 66 carries and two touchdowns. Here we go. Watch that big offensive line. They're kind of slanting right, and he takes it right through that gap. Breaks a tackle, gets a nice gainer. Second down and one. Russell, the quarterback, 501 yards passing this season. Hands off again to Worthland, and Worthland takes it for a first down and more. Well, this is uh, fundamental football right here. Basically, the offensive line, you can watch the surge here. Watch the pulling guard opening up a great hole on the trap, and uh, a great run produces another first down. 
mention Russell with 501 yards passing this year. Last year as a junior had 850 total on the season. Griff Russell. Two men in the backfield, man in motion. Hands off again to Worthland, who is 6'1", 195. He's a senior. Chris DeRozier the tackle. Load. Yep. Made a nice tackle, basically rolled him down. Uh, that time the offensive line straight up blocking, Dave, and uh, did not produce. Nope. Brings up a second and 10 now. Watch the possibility of a trap, draw, something of that nature. Probably someone other than Worthland carrying the ball. They have gone to him on three straight plays. Let's see what happens this time. Russell sends a man in motion and a shift in the backfield. Now he's got Falcon in motion. Russell the pass intended for number 20, Valdivieso, and uh, he really didn't know who it was intended for and watched it sail over his head. And Matt Robbins was wide open on the sideline. He was running a little, well, I shouldn't say a little, he was he was running a deep pattern right on the sideline, wide open. If they would have faked the middle, were too deep, that was a touchdown. Let's see if anybody else saw it. So the Eagle defense trying to come up big here now in a third and ten. Got to stop him. Again, similar formation. And again, in motion, is Juby Falcon. Back to pass and a little screen out to Falcon. Falcon hit out of bounds after he gains about a couple yards. It'll be fourth and a punting down now for the Barons. Well, the first time they've had to punt. That was a possession type play. Um, I don't understand. Well, they probably should have waited a little while Let's take to help him to get going. Uh, on a screen pass like this, he's looking over there. That's his first mistake because the whole defense can see that. It wasn't a very good pass. He had to jump for the ball and consequently very little gain, of course. Good read on the Eagle defense then. But uh, stepping that, up there. that play is real slow in developing or too fast in developing, actually. Here are the Barons to punt, and they were going after it. Barlow to punt it, and fielding it is number eight, and immediately a flag flies there. Now, I question this call if they're going to say he didn't give enough room to catch the ball. Because once that ball hits the ground, you don't have to give him a yard. I mean, it's his decision whether or not he catches the ball, but uh, maybe they'll pick this flag up. I don't know. Let's see what it is. Morgan had it, and there you see Morgan talking to the coaches. Why can't he touch the ball? <laughs> we could hear him down there. He said, yeah. the ref said he couldn't touch it after, what did, what did he do? He, I didn't see Even him if you call a fair catch. catch, you can still touch it, can't you? Well, sure, you can catch the ball. You can stop it from going further. And like mean, you said, I hope they pick this flag up. Well, they should. You're going to ask for an explanation over here on the, if you're on the Ferndale uh, sideline, and the Eagles do. The penalty is declined I still anyway, know what the penalty so was. really there shouldn't have been a penalty. According to uh, watch this now, he almost us. gets this one blocked. He There's barely a, gets it off. Watch the guy. Barlow got right it there. in there, and a good <laughs> effort in there. Oh yeah, he was calling a fair catch. By there Bain. we go. He was calling for the fair catch, but that doesn't mean he can't touch it. That's it. But who called for the fair catch? He did. Okay. So Morgan called for it, and Morgan can touch it. I don't think if, if another player came in, then you have a problem. First and 10, nonetheless, for the Eagles. So whatever happened, uh, it, it was doesn't matter. and it doesn't matter. And we're on with the game. And a big run on a first down carry here by Michael Thomas. Thomas, a junior, 155, 5'8", and is showing us some speed. Handed the ball off deep in the backfield that time to get a little bit of speed going. Saw his hole and burst right through it. One of their better calls. Watch him take the ball back to him. That allows him to get some speed and to go through that hole faster. Good tackle there by number 34, Rob Worthington, Worthland. Second and six now, four yards on the carry for Thomas. Thomas again, no, rather this is Allward in the backfield. Bill Allward getting it on a deep, carry and they're getting close to a first down but I don't think he got it. Again the similar play as last time the quarterback's taking the ball deep in the backfield and allowing the running back to build up some momentum. 
what is also happening is the offensive line is being able to push that defensive line back just a little bit, enough for that hole to break open. And it's enough for the first down, so a big break for the Eagles as they try to get out of their own territory. Ball now at about the 39-yard line. Full house in the backfield, stunt put on, and taking it is Thomas. Thomas spun around, maybe gained a yard on the play. Reminds me of the old crossbuck play we used to run back in high school. You fake to the first man coming in, give the other guy. Don't forget to tune in to Oakland Press Perspective with host Neil Monroe, the editor of the Oakland Press, every Friday night at 8.30 p.m. right here on United Artists 63. I'm really impressed with our new graphics, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, we got they a guy working good. on those all night and day and did a nice job on them. Don't you think? They're I, etched in stone, kind of. I kind of like it. Yeah. You don't think I pick up on these things. So. <laughs> right here, uh, you see something you like, too, and that is our, uh, our parabolic microphone, folks. What is that? that? That is what allows us to hear down on the field. Jeff Jamison, our audio person down there, trying to see things differently. Uh, kind of like the eyes of, of a fish, if you will. <laughs> but we don't want to talk about fishing shows on no, this No, no, no fishing. No fishing. Sorry, Mark. The pass, uh, anyway, the pass incomplete <laughs> as we get back to the action. Let's take a look. Here's a replay. Tight end was open that time. Uh, I think he looked down at the uh, out-of-bounds stake before he caught it. Might have threw him off because he was right on the sideline. Ball uh, was in his hands. Should have had it. In and out. John Bezier says, yeah, we should have had it. Carlos has been throwing the ball rather well a few, on a few occasions. The receivers just yeah. caught it. Uh, primarily running team, and uh, Carlos has done a pretty good job passing. Hand off to the second man through, and that is Thomas. Gain of about uh, three yards, and it'll be fourth down and about five coming up. Conservative play on third down and long draws or screens are typically conservative. There's speaking of, man, speaking yeah. of fishing, uh, fishing shows, there you see uh, Mark Gomez, our uh, our backup play-by-play uh, -play man, if you will. <laughs> but he's doing what he does best, and that is uh, camera work, or so I'm told. Fair catch, or was it a fair catch? Well, oh, penalty yeah, now, was. and it was unofficial whether he got the fair catch. Well, he didn't we, call We've had problems with that yeah. all night, Bob. Yeah, he, he didn't call it. The, he uh, kind of raised his hand, but well, he never got an official. I thought the other receiver called it. <laughs> and he was behind him. The ball was kicked over the other guy's head. And uh, once it's called, it's called. The yeah, that'll be Aso called it. And then the other uh, return man right there, See, the first guy called the fair yeah. catch. And then he got out of the way. Yeah. And then over there is number 26, Chick. Adam Chick took it when uh, he didn't call for the fair catch. So... Nonetheless, penalty flags fly, and uh, that brings the Barons back even further. I'll tell you what he paid for, because he got hit pretty hard at the end of that play. Yeah. Ah, he's young. He can handle it, right? <laughs> Let's see here. I hear this call. Invalid fair catch. White. First right down. Here, First down. Invalid fair catch is the call. Uh, referee's point very point technical point today. Point. Yeah, we got to talk to this In guy. Yeah. He's... Uh, Seems like a fun guy to talk to after the games. We'll take him out with us after. It's a local pub. <laughs> In motion, Valdivieso, but he's going to pass. Russell complete to his tight end. Phillips, Phillips still fighting for more yardage. He picked up about 13 yards on the play. He made a great individual effort trying. They tried to strip the ball from him. You can see it right here. But uh, he made a great individual effort after the catch. So watch this. He almost gets sacked again. Gets the ball off. Good pass, too. Yeah, he really pass. didn't have time to really set up. Here's individual effort. In the background, I don't know if you're going to be able to see Juby Falk and throw one of the other players down. I don't know if you can see it. Nope, you're not going to be able to see it here. But it was a good individual effort. Juby made a uh, strong strong block. We'll say. Just threw him down. That play gets him out of the their own end, pretty much. It gives him room to work. Taking it, and a little mix-up, and a big first down carry for Juby Falcon. Oh, man, I don't know what happened that <laughs> What happened that play? Well, it looked like a draw play. I guess uh, that's what it was. Quarterback got tangled up. Yeah. Let's take a look. And uh, 
He wanted to look like he's, this was an option play. He could have pitched the ball out, but now a little cross series. Uh, oh, there it is. Across. The handoff came off Got green. tied up on uh, number 60, tried to make the tackle. That was, uh, who was that? I don't have him on my roster. Yeah, I do. That was Mike Olson. A big run by Falcon. Falcon had it. He just got tied up. Going deep and off the fingertips. Uh, Schultz. Intercepted. Intercepted. That was hard to see. Did he keep it in bounds? I think Did so. He catch it They're in calling bounds? it Incredible. an interception. Let's take a look at this one. Barry Schultz, the intended receiver. Russell throwing deep, and uh, it looked like he was out of bounds right here. The receiver should have knocked it the ball back out. in play. That's what happened, and Niffin picked it up with both feet in, and he only has to have one. Well, that's a a big break. interception. Yeah. It looked like the Barons were on the move, and Niffin comes up with a big interception here. I'm surprised he didn't catch that ball first, but secondly, he should have knocked the ball down, not in the. Not up in the air. Or knock it out of bounds. He exactly. knocked it back into the field of play. Stunt. They blow by the quarterback. Uh, Griffin gets loose around the outside for a gain of about a yard or two. Two-yard gain. It'll be second and eight coming up. The uh, best play to call on a four when the uh, linebackers are stunning. Here's our score. 14 to nothing and over uh, against Ferndale. We're getting back to what I was saying. The best play to call when you're having blitzing linebackers our uh, throws your tight ends, quick throws your tight ends, crossing patterns. And we're going to cross you up right now with a Roadshow video promo. Roadshow video every Saturday and Monday at 9 p.m. Don't forget to tune in right here on United Artists 63. And there's some music for you provided by the Ferndale Band. Second and eight. <laughs> All word is just crunched off tackle. By about four or five Barons and uh, was in there. I like him. Kind of made uh, watch number fifty that the time. There's a linebacker backs. coming right up and in, and watch this hit he puts on him. Boom! Nice shoulder Stood in there. Stood him right up and got some help. Got a lot of help. That, that hurt. That was a five-person tackle. And nothing on the carry, so it'll be third and eight now, and a passing down for the Falcon, the Eagles. Excuse me again. A lot of birds at Griffin on the run. Griffin picks up the first down and out of bounds. And the Eagles get another first down. That was a designed passing play. And they had the linebacker Hamburger down here in the corner. He won't be able to see it, but he's looking. He's going to look his left. He's going to look for his receiver, number 30. He falls down. So he has nothing to do. He takes the ball around to the right and makes a nice gain out of it. That's all individual effort right there. Great play, Carlos Griffin. Showing me a lot here today. Yes, he has. He's got to do that to keep this team going. But down on the field, we had a penalty flag. So we're going to take the third down over again. Oh, no. What a bad break for him. Yeah, hey, how far are they going to knock him back? Is it from the line of scrimmage or from the point of the foul? I didn't see the flag come down. It must have been from the point of the foul. Looks like it is. Flip. Flip. Brown. Third down over. Third down over. It's a clip, and uh, well, they knock him back quite a bit here. Doesn't uh, like using too many adjectives or uh, prepositions. Huh? That's why he's a no nonsense kind of guy. Gotta like that. No nonsense kind of rep. That's some of those guys in the NFL that give you a full explanation. Here's our clock. Not here. 424 left here in the first half. Score 14 nothing. And over leading. And uh, basically in control of this game. Ferndale's been hurting themselves uh, with bad penalties and costly turnovers. Here come the Eagles now. Third and 17. And they run a draw and it opens up big. First down and what a big play. And number 35 on the carry. Hasn't been in there much. James Burrell. James Burrell got the carry. Show me some speed there. 5'9", 180 pounds. Broke open. Watch this. Straight dive play. That's all this. He got hit back. Kept his composure. Got his legs going. And showed some speed. Here he goes. Almost outran everybody. Of course, guess who makes the tackle? Yeah, the big thing is getting that first <laughs> down, and he got it. Dan Hamburger again. Good linebacker play. Running back, making that tackle 15 yards back. First, first and 10 yeah. now. 
Ball at about the 37. Taking it is Griffin. Griffin lunging forward and may have a first down, but a flag on the play. Clip, hold, what was it? One of the two. Maybe going the other way. Looks like a holding, and it is. It's right in that area of a holding. Let's take a look. Yep, a couple missed tackles here this time. Uh, yeah, you can see it right there. There's right the hold. There. Number yep. 73's got a hold of 81. And a couple missed tackles here. Not very good, but doesn't matter. Play's coming back. First down over. First down over, you heard the call, and it is a holding. They're gonna knock him back now, first. The second big uh, penalty in this drive, they overcame the first one with a great uh, draw play for uh, 18 yards. And, now they're gonna have to come back again on exactly. first and 20. And I'll tell you what, that takes a lot out of an offense, having to come back from these type of deficits. Harris running in the play. Bernard Harris had a chance to make a big play earlier on a good pass. So if he can have some speed, maybe they're going to look for a play to him. They need a lot. There you see the Eagles sidelines. Trying to get the uh, offense fired up, but they've got a lot of ground to make up now. First and 20. Griffin on a draw play. They try to draw again. This time, not as much success as last time. Allward on the carry, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. Well, they were looking for that time again. The inside linebackers held their ground, filled the holes, and made the tackle. The key to the draw is they're trying to get the uh, linebackers, if they're blitzing, to get by them. Don't forget to tune in next week. The Rochester Adams Highlanders taking on the Royal Oak Dondero Oaks Saturday and Monday at 7 p.m. Right here on United Artists 63. The Mighty Oaks are losing their leaves. I know, I've been ranking. Are they? <laughs> Well, you know, you got the Maples over there in Birmingham Seahawks. Yep. So. Second down and 20. Griffin unloads deep. Had his man, but a hit instantaneously. He's number 81, Randy St. Laurent. And that was right there, Bob, but a good play defensively. A good pass. He, he almost, watch this now. He's going to go back. He's got some time. He gets pressure right at the end and has to unload it maybe just a second too early. Gets off a decent pass, a real, real nice pass. That's a beautiful actually. pass, right and, there. And uh, the defensive player had just enough time to make up ground and come over and knock the ball loose. Feinberg on the defensive play. And a good defensive hit right there. Makes it a third and 20 now for the Eagles. Third and 21. Griffin on the draw. Gives it to his back, Thomas, and Thomas gains maybe about three or four yards and will bring up a punting down now as we see Vineyard come out for the Falcons. Well, last uh, couple punts have been very good. They need a big one here because there's only two minutes and four seconds and counting left here in the half, and uh, they need to send them deep, so it makes a long drive for additional score if they could. There's our clock, a minute, 52 and counting. They're coming, and you got it off. And the Barons are down on the return. It was Andy Schultz, Schultz hit, and just couldn't uh, go anywhere as they had his feet tied up. 138 left now as we see Vineyard getting some pressure here, Bob. Yeah, he gets the ball off. And it's a low line drive kick. It's one of those you can return. But look at this. He almost got the ball. Holy cow. Feinberg is real close to getting it. This is why they didn't return is he didn't step up to get the ball once it hit. He waited for the ball to come to him. And uh, consequently wasn't able to uh, put on a return. Here's Russell. Riff Russell back to pass. Unloads deep. Has his man in and out of his hands. Andy Phillips yeah, had he, it in and out of his hands, and he knew that one. Oh, God, was he right hit there. him right on the run. Excellent play by the quarterback. Excellent call by the coach. Just uh, didn't come through with it. Let's take a look. Here's the pass. It looks like a perfect one. Nice spiral. And watch it go. Look at that cam work. Slow <laughs> motion. Look right at that. there. Boom, right in his hands, and there it goes, right out. Oh, and he tried to get it back, and a good play defensively, and tying him up. And look at the ref, right on the play. 
And after that play, Phillips holding his one arm up. He didn't uh, have it loose. Russell gets pressured and tries to unload towards Phillips. We've got a uh, push in the backfield, it looks like. And Griffin, our quarterback, is out there defensively. It's against uh, Andover. Looks like one of their offensive linemen tried to push the defender going after the quarterback, so uh, they're going to be called for that. Now, Ferndale's got the option here to uh, take the penalty or take the down. Clock stopped at 1.15 left in the first half. You're going to push him back. Illegal use of the hands. White. 10 yards. Second down over. Still no prepositions. Okay. And here you go. You can, <laughs> you can see right here a lot of pressure on it. And you can see right there he's trying to push from behind. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see that time, but he did. They called it. If you saw it, Bob, I believe. I saw it. All right. Russell handing off. The Valdivieso running around, and the Valdivieso on a pretty good pickup, but not enough. He ran Timeout called by the Eagles. With this pause in the action, 104 left. We'll be back with more right after this. For some, Sunday dinner with a family is a thing of the past. Now more than ever, the United Way Torch Drive needs your donations so that thousands of elderly can eat at local senior centers. Give a little piece of your heart. Because more grandmas should be having Sunday dinner with a family again. We're back here at Hanson Field at uh, Ferndale High School. 14 to nothing and over leads. Bob, uh, last week uh, when we had that uh, tornado watch, in effect, we had a chance to meet. Uh, uh, Here's a replay this time. You're watching oh, a halfback right coming ahead. back from the wing back. That's okay. They took the ball up the replay. middle. Replay. Replay. There Here we is. go. Nice run. All First right. down. I'm sorry. Third down. But I was going to say, Teresa and Lori are down there in the concessions. And uh, now we can see a replay. I don't anyway. want a replay. I was 58, no, not at all. 58 seconds left. A little bit more excitement out of uh, our director would be appreciated. <laughs> but anyway, uh, here's the replay. Let's take a look this time. We'll watch this one go in the hands, go out of the hands, and it's incomplete. In a lot of hands, actually. There's Four people there. Yeah, triple coverage there, Bob. Yeah. Anyway, a hi, hi to Teresa and Lori and the concession stand over there. Every time we come here, they've got the fabulous Italian sausage over here at, at Hanson. Oh, block, it block. is blocked. A big block. And the e Eagles will come out fired up with 52 seconds left and in pretty good field position. Bob, That's the most I'm excited. That was the most exciting play of the day for uh, Ferndale. And I'll tell you right here, this is just all effort. And watch you, you can watch them leap in the air and catch this one at, at its height right here. Boom, look at that. Way up in the air. And that's a huge, huge play for Ferndale. If they can get on the board right here, whether it be even just a field goal. Now, keep in mind, they didn't score last week. Yep. So they need to get on the board just to get some self-confidence back in them. And come back and have some momentum going here in the second half. A big play going into the locker room now. If they can come up with this. Now, if they can't them. score, it will work the opposite way. They got a big break. If they can't take advantage of it, yeah, it's going to work it. the opposite way. And don't forget to tune in for Transition every Saturday at 10 p.m. right here on United Artists 63 with your host, Jeffrey Miller. Or is it Jeff Miller? What does I he don't prefer? Know. Jeff, I guess. Yeah. I think we'll make it informal. Good big one. Asking for a little help in our, from our director on that one. You mean the guy who talks to us with our little headsets here? Yeah, yeah, yeah tell him. The one who says, replay. <laughs> well, here we go, folks. Ferndale's got a chance. High formation in the backfield for Griffin. Two receivers up top. Carlos Griffin back to pass. Going downfield. He's going to run it. He's got a lot of room. Inside the 20. 
And he is down. No flags, and that is good. First down right around the 20-yard line with 43 seconds left. Now the clock runs once they get set up. He had pressure. He had pressure, and this is the key to the play. He sees the pressure, steps up, and he just gets in his mind. He's going to run right there. And look at the blocking. Excellent sustained blocking at the line. The uh, all the, all the uh, linemen kept their blocks and allowed him to get the ball downfield. Nice tackle by Juby down there. And uh, big play for Ferndale. First down. And a timeout call by the Eagles as it was just uh, 43 seconds left. Front page football every Saturday night right here on United Artists 63 at 6.30 p.m. Tune in for uh, some great interviews with the Detroit Lions uh, right before game day. That's no no game football. this week, though. No game this week. A uh, well-deserved break for uh, Barry Sanders, Rodney Pete, and uh, all those guys. And I understand they got rid of the disgruntled Harvey Salem. Good. It's about time. He doesn't want to play for us. Get rid of him. Yeah, why would anyone want to play for a 5-1 team? I don't I just, know. I don't understand it. There you can see head coach John Brooks on the far sideline. 14 and nothing he leads, but with 43 seconds left, the Eagles are mounting a surprise attack right now. And their main weapon has been Carlos Griffin, the quarterback. He's done it all today. Griffin with an eye formation in the backfield. Two receivers up top. Griffin pitching out at the last second and losing the ball. He is down, but it was already whistled. He did lose it and did not have control when he went down, but the whistle already blew. Well, that was a break Thomas, for Ferndale right there because big he break. did fumble that ball. So Thomas got a little help from the man with the whistle. Here you see Griffin getting the pressure and dishing Never it off to Michael the ball. Thomas. Never had the ball. This pass goes incomplete as Griffin was throwing, and he stops the clock with 17 seconds. That was a design play to stop the clock. So it'll bring up second, or excuse me, third and ten now. Now in the pros, they've constituted a new rule this year. Or actually, it was last year where you can just throw the ball down on the ground without a uh, grounding play. In uh, high school, you can't do that. you got to throw the ball in somebody's direction. Yep. I formation. One receiver down the bottom of the screen. That is Harris. And the other one split up top. That is Alan Griffin. Griffin throwing deep. And intended down there for Harris. There was a little shoving going on. Down yeah, but there. the ball was uh, couldn't be kept, caught. It was a uh, in, in catchable ball, uncatchable. We'll say. I just first time I've noticed though, but Carlos Griffin has got the uh, rip pad on. Did you notice that? Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he might have some problems with his ribs. Of course, as I mentioned earlier in the game, when your quarterback runs a lot, you can see right there that red uh, belt around him, uh, protecting his lower ribs and his back. There it is. It's a unique uh, device. We didn't have it back when I played, uh, back in 06. But now Carlos isn't a big guy. He does not have uh, the size of a Russell, but uh, he'll need that protection. Here's Griffin. Wants to throw. Unloads into the end zone and overthrows the intended receiver, Alan Griffin. And that was the fourth down play, and, uh, well, they couldn't get a field goal. With four seconds left, that'll do it. Here's that fourth down. Well, he's got a lot of time. He's looking for a receiver who, are, who isn't open. Spreads out a little bit. Fakes it. Oh, fake the cameras out, too. Gets the ball downfield and just overthrows his receiver. He's got a good, accurate arm. That ball is just overthrown. So now the Barons have a chance to just run out the clock. Let's see what they do. And he will kneel down, and that'll do it for the first half. Here at Hanson Field at Ferndale High School, the Ferndale Eagles had a chance with under a minute left to get some points on the board before the half, and they had four downs, just couldn't do it. And that's where we stand. 14 to nothing at halftime, Bob. And, uh, well, the Eagles still struggling offensively. Well, that was their big chance that time to at least get some momentum back. They didn't capitalize. And, uh, of course, that's not going to help them coming in in the second half. Okay, we'll be back with the second half and some, some statistics for you coming up right after these messages. Stay with us. And over 14 and Ferndale nothing. This season, the Pistons and the Red Wings are playing together under one roof. Yours. 
Pass Sports is your ticket to over 40 Pistons and 44 Red Wings games right in your own living room. All this and a special pass offer is now available. Call to subscribe today. Tune in to pass this fall and winter for exciting CCHA hockey, MAC Conference Sports, the greatest games in baseball history, winter sports shows, and more. Call your cable system today for this special pass offer. Pass Sports, just watch us. We're back here at Ferndale High School just in time to bring you music from The Wizard of Oz as performed by the Ferndale Marching Band. Let's go down to the field. This is it, one of the greatest values in cable history. It's Showcase, HBO, Encore, and the Movie Channel, plus your choice of Showtime or Disney. Four great premium channels for only $4.93 each per month. Save up to 45%. Watch your mail and find out how to get Showcase for only $4.93 each per month. Get passed for just $8 when you subscribe to Showcase. Call now to order, 549-2100 or 334-1144. We're back here at Hanson Field. Dave Zorn along with Bob Griglack. And the score 14 to nothing. Let's see the stats real quick before the kickoff here of the second half. And uh, some pretty telling statistics, Bob. Well, look right here at passing yards. Ferndale's zero. Total yards, 214 to 83. Turnover's not a big difference. Not a big difference in uh, first downs. But look at time of possession. Double for Ferndale, but they're losing 
by 14 to nothing. Losing by two touchdowns, which uh, really is not that tough to make up in a whole half. So stick around, folks. 14 to nothing the score. The Ferndale Eagles to kick off and get us underway here in the second half. The kick is up, and it is taken down there by Andy Schultz. Schultz breaks one tackle. He is quick. He's gone. out. He has got some speed. Lightning quick. Andy Schultz, no flags down, and Andover picks up seven right off the bat. Well, six right away. We'll Unbelievable wait and see. Unbelievable start. Incredible. Now, I'll tell you what, we were just talking before the end of the half. Uh, Ferndale lost the momentum because they weren't able to put any points on the board. And sure enough, the kickoff goes right down their throat. A lot of speed that time. Andy Schultz, who is a split, and his brother Barry Schultz, also on the team. But Andy took off with blazing speed. He found an opening right up the middle and took off for a kickoff return of, I would say, about what? 90 yards 80, plus. 80 yeah. some yards. The extra point is good. So just like that, it was 14 to nothing in here to start it with 11.48 left in the second half. The Barons strike quickly. First half, uh, the big player was number 88, Andy Phillips for Avondale. Four catches, 442 yards, and two TDs. Oakland Forum every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. and Friday at 9 p.m. on United Artists 63. Don't forget to tune in for that. It's one of the many programs provided, the local origination programs provided by United Artists. Well, that was an 80-yard touchdown run. Barons providing all the scoring tonight, 21 points so far. Andy Schultz. On an, what was it, 80 yard return? 80 yard return. And he showed pro type speed. I bet you ran that about 4 4. That was incredible speed. One of the fastest runners I've seen in high school. Just took off. Southfield's got a couple of those quick guys. Wow, well, Southfield, though. Yeah. But this was just incredible. Coming back, especially after halftime. Robbins' kick is high and short, and it turns out it could be an onside kick, but fielding it. And luckily for the Eagles, falling on top of it was Burrow. What must be a plan uh, by John Brooks to kick to a certain spot on the field where either they're going to cook to somebody, kick to somebody with bad hands or an open spot because it looks like it's a design play. They're just not, uh, not kicking the ball deep. And we know that Robbins can kick the ball deep. We've seen he's had a good uh, leg. Well, I don't know if you want to call it a drive, but well, we will. It was one play. It was 12 seconds, and he did it. It's 80 yards flat. What Took a run. 12 seconds to run it? Yeah. I don't know about no, that. They, that. That counts the kickoff. Including hang time. That, Including that hang time. counts the kickoff and the hang time. The Eagles on uh, their first down. They can't gain much that time. It was Thomas on the carry. You know, 100 yard, uh, if you can run 100 yard dash in uh, 10 seconds, that's fast. That's fast? Yeah. So you figure hang time and everything. He, he ran that 80 yards pretty quick. He did. Morgan running the play in. David Morgan, the wide receiver for the Eagles as they come up now with a second and 11. Loss of about a yard on the play. Well, they need to put some points on the board, and uh, if they have to start throwing the ball, I'll tell you what, it's going to spell trouble. There's John Bajor. Uh, they'll stunt, yep. and they'll run at him. I formation in the backfield, two receivers. In motion is Thomas, loses it. Ball is loose. Andover has it. Oh, my. A bad break for the Eagles. It looked like maybe they could get something going on this drive, and a bad break as the handoff between Griffin and Thomas just doesn't happen here, Bob. It's another one of these cross series where they fake one way, give to the running back, coming the other way. The quarterback didn't pull the ball back in time, hit, hit the other uh, running back, and the ball fell loose. Well, it was loose. He didn't even have a handle on it. Well, exactly. He didn't even try to hand it off because it hit uh, the first back that he faked to in the, in the leg. Russell handing off to his fullback, Worthland, and he gets closer to 
the first down marker. It'll be second and about five coming up. Well, I can say one thing about Fernando. They sure put on an excellent halftime show here today. Probably one of the nicest ones we've seen in a few years doing these broadcasts. Yep, and uh, had a chance to uh, revisit uh, Oz, the land of Oz. Yes. I wish I was there. No, you wish you were back in Kansas. Yes, go home. Take me home. <laughs> second down and five now for the Barons. Russell, Griff Russell, the quarterback, sends Falcon in motion. Hands off to the fullback. Not much there. Wait a second. A fumble. A fumble. 20 came up with it for Ferndale. That was Bill Alward. Alward came up with it. Let's see what happens here. He's a linebacker. Let's see how he Does picks he even it get up. the snap? Let's see. Here, there it is. It's an inside oh, handoff. It, it was a reverse. From, from Juby. Yep. And the uh, ball just fell loose. Didn't put the ball in there. He didn't get the uh, handoff yep. well. It was Juby Alward. Falcon had it and uh, tried to come around. Valdo Vieso was coming around the inside. It was a reverse, and uh, they lost the ball. So a big break now for the Eagles. Not much there in first down. Second down, about nine. Linebackers are coming up on the line, and uh, we used to call it a crazy eight defense or defense or monster slant, where the linebacker would call which direction he was going in. He would hit the uh, defensive tackle on the right side or the left side, let him know where he's going, and then they'll slant, and uh, linebacker will go one way, defensive tackle will go the other to fill the gaps. Second and nine now. Three backs in the backfield, full house. Griffin pitching out. Thomas in the backfield. He is hit for a loss. Good penetration by 33 getting in there. Feinberg and Workman. That is Adam Feinberg. Let's take a look this time, Bob. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a fake. Then here's the pitch. This is getting a little hectic now, but watch these two linebackers come up and fill. Right here, both of them. Nice tackle. Getting in there also. Feinberg and Worthland. Worthland, uh, the middle linebacker, the inside linebacker. They have two inside linebackers, Worthland and Juby Falcon. Third and 11, a big down now for Carlos Griffin. I formation in the backfield. Griffin back to pass. Griffin has a man open. He's got him for a first down. Gain of about 13, 14 yards and a big play. Carlos Griffin, let's take a look. I'll tell you what, Alward was open, wide open down the middle too, so here's the key to the play. He's got time to throw the ball. Gets the ball off and makes a nice pass right on the sideline for the first down. Right on the numbers, perfect. Well, they, dropped, they dropped a few of those earlier in yep. this game, so. St. Laurent, Randy St. Laurent picks it up, the tight end, and a big one, 6'3", 205, senior. And a big first down for the Ferndale Eagles. 7.43 left in the third quarter. 21 to nothing, Andover leads. Griffin takes it himself, cuts up field, and gains about two or three. I've just been informed by our statistician, Mr. Sy, that that was the first pass completion. Sy, to me, the Meester says that's the first, that, that is the, the first, first one. one. I believe Sy. I say the last name again? Cy de Mulemeester. I never try that. Here. <laughs> Here's the quarterback again. He, he, uh, he's hiding that hip pad, but he's got it on. And I'll tell you what, the more he runs, the more he's going to feel it. But it's starting to get awfully cold down there, folks. Cy, if I say it wrong, let me know, okay? I've said it right so far. I get the big okay. Cy is uh, a very valuable person up here for Bob and I. Particularly for me. Otherwise, we would be sitting here going, oh, well. Here's the quarterback, Griffin, back to pass, and he is just swarmed by the Baron defense. Led by John Groden, the sophomore defensive end. I'll tell you what, that ground must be getting hard, because you can see, if you keep, if you watch it, you can see their uh, breath now, which means it's getting cold. Well, it might not be hard because it did rain last night. And it was a little soft. The, the ground was a little soft. So, uh... It's hard. But... Is, is it? <laughs> All right, I'll take your word for if it. If you fall, it's hard. Yeah. No matter what. Yes. Yeah. 
Third and 15 now, 6.15 left in the third quarter. And just when it looks like the Eagles have something going, the Barons come up with a big defensive play and knock them back. Here's Griffin to pass, looking for a man, and it just caves in on him. And another big loss. It'll be fourth and a punting down now for the Eagles. Well, they need to roll him out because he's just not getting the time. He goes yep. back to pass, and as he sets up, you can see right here, his receive, one receiver is covered. He's got no time to look anywhere else. And a very strong takedown by John Groden that time. Yep. Carlos felt that on the helmet. Fourth down and about 25. Vineyard to punt. They're coming, but he gets it off. And another good one, end over end, and this will take pretty much an and over bounce as it bounces backward to midfield. I'll tell you what, number two, Andy Shonith, Shonich, has got to get out of the way. He ran over by the ball, and if that ball takes a bad bounce, that's a fumble. Yeah, Schultz wanted to run it back again. He's got to get away from it. Watch the rush. And they almost get him here. If he'd have dove at that ball, he would have got it. He got some pressure. He got some pressure, got a good punt off. It is uh, first and 10, ball at about the 49 of Andover. Looks like a blitz coming up with the Eagles, and they just missed it. They just missed it. The ball went right up the middle. They were slightly off tackle. They're slanting their offensive line either right or left, and that's when they're getting their big plays. When they have straight-up blocking, Ferndale's covering them pretty well. Watch the offensive line slant left here. Rob there they go. There's the point guard, 54. Everybody slanting left. Open up a big hole for them. Just a straight trap play. Everybody slants left. Opens up that hole in the middle. Worthland on the carry for about seven. It'll be second and a long three coming up. Russell on the reverse. And Valdivieso hit there by number three, Harris, Bernard Harris on the stop as Valdivieso takes it for a first down. Another uh, pole type play, number 64, the uh, offensive right guard pulls to the right and they uh, run a sweep to the right. Held up a little bit there, but he holds his ground and uh, makes a nice tackle and uh, gets a decent sized game for the first down. First and 10 now inside Eagle territory. Just inside the 40-yard line at about the 38. Valerieso loses it and goes down on one knee immediately. The whistles blow and a loss on the play for the Barons. Well, the last three plays, they pulled the guard one way or the other. Right, first they did it left, then they went right, now they went back left. Watch 64 again. He'll pull left, and here's the handoff in which he drops it. Quarterback did not put the ball deep into his, his stomach that time. Kind of just laid it out there. Running back's got to go out and grab that if that's the case, and he didn't. It may it. have been another reverse, too, because he saw Falcon run into him. Well, the it ball, looked like the Falcon. Play, the play was going to go yeah. left. You're right, because they pulled the guard left. Good call. And 64 was going to pave the way for Falcon to come around. Let's see if they try to run it again. Russell this time straight handoff to the quick one. Schultz, Andy Schultz, getting back up to the original line of scrimmage. And it'll be fourth down now. Or, excuse me, third down. Trying to look at both the yard marker and the scoreboard, and they differ. Well, we're going to give him we're gonna give him a nickname. We're going to call him Bullet, since uh, Rocket and Missile are already taken. Yeah. We're going to call him Bullet, but uh, Bullet doesn't get much of a chance here. They tried pulling the guard again left. Uh, got out in front, 58 is there, 64 is out there in front of him. And... Uh, Closes the end up in a short game. There we see head coach John Brooks looking on at a third and nine situation. Russell the pass, just as he unloads, gets hit, will not see the completion, and the touchdown by Phillips. Russell is hurt. Ah, he's okay, he's just basking in it. But Andy oh, Phillips <laughs> comes up with his third touchdown reception of the night. He had three coming in. That's Did Phillips go down? Phillips went down again. Phillips got up yep. from when he got hit and went down on the field again. He was blindsided from behind. Griff was laid out after he threw that ball, I'll tell you. Just as he unloaded the pass, he was hit from behind 
and never saw it. Let's take a look and we can see Russell get hit from behind. Well, I can't believe, first of all, he got this ball off and had any kind of, sp had any kind of speed. Yeah, Randy St. Laurent comes in. Now watch, watch how it. close it was. He gets rid of the ball right there. Looks like he might have undercut him a little bit. It might be a leg injury. I don't know. It could be like right under the ribs where we saw uh, Carlos Griffin have his pad. And a nice anyway, run after the catch. Andy Phillips shakes another tackler, and oh, he is in again. He's pushing 200 yards in reception. I'll tell you what, that's one heck of a game for that young man. 38-yard reception. 180 yards on five receptions, three for touchdowns. And that will hurt if, that, uh, if the quarterback is out. What a great game Russell has had. Well, it isn't Russell. That's number 58. That's one of the uh, offensive linemen. Okay. That's Chip Barlow. Well, that's a big break. That uh, Even that uh, 58 is getting up. Don't forget Oakland Press Perspective. Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. Right here on United Artists Cable of Oakland County. 63. Yeah, Griff is the holder out there. And he's definitely there. I see him. Here we go for the extra point. Robbins has been perfect. And to hold is Russell. So Russell is in the game, and Robbins kicks it through. Oh, he looks like he missed it wide right. That's the, first, no good, one. Huh? That's the first one he missed all year. He was 18 in a row up to that point. 18 in a 18 row. That was like row. money in the bank. I was ready to put it down, yeah. but it is no good. And it keeps the score at 27 to nothing. Well, I noticed the little kid caught the ball up to the right, to the right side. And I kind of thought to myself, hmm. And I looked at the ref, and he said, no good. So that kind of told me why. That, that'll tell you. Yeah. yeah. I'm over here doing my statistics, and I didn't get a chance to look Ooh, up. There, so anyway, we got two of us. We've got 220 left here in the third quarter. And the Barons look good going into the fourth with a 20 to, to 27 to nothing lead. Here you see the uh, injured player, 58, Chip Barlow. The, uh, Great number, by the way, 58. 58, <laughs> gee, uh, what, Lambert, was no, it? Oh, me. Oh, some uh, grabs thinking of great, <laughs> great 58s. Oh. St. Lads, was it? Yeah, St. Lads. Okay, give yourself a there plug, you go. go ahead. All right, all right. Tell them you sell insurance, 156 go ahead. tackles in eight games, I mean, <laughs> you know, not bad. Here to kick off is Robbins now, Matt Robbins, the score 27 nothing here at Ferndale and the Eagles, every time they just try to get something going, the Barons come up with a great play. Get it's an ball. outside kick, it's a loose ball. They got a fall on it, a big mistake. Exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Last time, they've got a planned play, the kicking to a spot on the field. They've done it four times today. I mentioned earlier in the first half that he had to go after the ball. Luckily, the ball bounced out of bounds. This time, he kicked to a spot in the middle of the field, and sure enough, Mr. Hamburger falls on it. Yeah, it's not like a punt, guys, where you can just let it roll. you got to fall on it anytime it's a kickoff. Oh, man, I'll and tell you. And it goes 10 yards. That's a free ball. What Anybody can take it. So now the defense really has to dig him out of a hole. And as always, the first carry goes to the fullback. Workland, who has done a pretty good job in those first down carries, gets him in pretty good position for a second down play now. That's a good call on first down. Uh, no mistakes. Straight dive play. A little bit of pull by the guard. They're running a trap again. And uh, gets a nice game. Five yards, second down, uh, long five, we'll say. There's our, there's our drive, five plays, two minutes and 53 seconds, 51 total yards, 38 of it on the big pass play to Andy Phillips. And yeah, when they strike, they strike quick. They don't necessarily eat up a lot of time. As you saw at halftime, the uh, time of possession went in favor of the Eagles. Here's Valdivieso on an end around, and he gets the first down. Gain of about 10 on that one. Well, the Barons have just worn down Ferndale today. Uh, it's getting to a point now where after that last kick, you could see uh, you could see that they're not running as fast as they did the first half. And, and again, all this is straight hand off. They're 64 out in front again, pulling, and uh, a decent game for the first down. You're killing me, Dennis. The defense uh, with a great uh, surge that time, rather the offensive line on the defense, and that just uh, had Valdivieso running around the side. Here's another big run. Flags are down, though, and it looks like he picked up a first down, but Adam Chick. He's a hole against the offense. 
came up with a nice run and uh, in the area of holding. Blocking below the waist. Now what is that? Flip. Flip. Below the waist. Flip. Whatever. Let's see if we can see here. Here's the pulling guard. 50 this time. Getting out in front of the play. Doesn't block number 27, 77 who got back in the backfield. Let's see if we can find it right there. You see that? Block from the other side. There it is. He's on hamburger. Second down about one. I don't know if he's below the waist, but it uh, looked like he was a clip. However they call it, it's going against the Bears. Let's see what we got. Illegal block, white, first down over. Going in. Okay, the Ill illegal block below the waist brings it back, first down over again. Uh, 38 seconds left in the third quarter. And the Andover Barons with a comfortable lead of 27 to nothing. And as if they needed it, they just picked up an onside kick. Not that it was intentional, but they were kind of hoping for it uh, throughout the game. And it happened. Worthlin on the carry. He gains a chunk of the yardage back, about five or six on the carry. Well, it must have been something they've seen in the films. Obviously, uh, John Brooks has looked at that and made that play. Don't forget to tune in for Roadshow Video every Saturday and Monday night at 9 p.m. right here on United Artists 63. Roadshow Video. It is a cold night, as Bob said, and that field is hard, but up in the stands, it uh, may get even colder because you got a little bit of a wind blowing up here, and even if there is a little bit of a wind, it is cold. It'll end the third quarter of play, and we'll go down all the way down to the other end of the field for the fourth quarter now. We were talking at halftime how long that first half was, and uh, we uh, explained it because of the passing that, uh, that Andover is doing. They're striking quick, but it's taking uh, more time in real time than it is off the clock. Real time, I like that. Don't forget to tune in next week. We'll have Rochester Adams taking on the Dondero Oaks. That's Saturday and Monday, 7 p.m. right here on United Artists Cable of Oakland County. Dave, Channel do you know where the uh, roadshow video is going on this week? Where are, they, where are they heading to? I don't know. I'll have to get that word from the truck. Cedar Point, I think. Oh, oh i got to watch that. That's Cedar Point, the, the final, uh, I think, weekends of Cedar Point. Yeah, that and, should uh, be fun. A little bit of the last bit of summer fun before we head into winter here. The Andover Touchdown Club. Well, they've had a few to cheer for. They've had four of them. Three of them by Andy Phillips. Andy Phillips, three receptions, and then uh, the big run back by Andy Schultz. So a uh, big night for Andy. Both of them. Here's Andy again. Andy Phillips. And uh, getting close to the original line of scrimmage, it'll bring up a third and about 11 or 12. That was the shortest reception of the year, probably. I mean, he's had him 30, 40, 50 yards. <laughs> this one's used three or four. Not used to that from him. And just a short uh, little flare pass out to the tight end in the flat. He looked left first and threw right. And that ball was almost knocked down by number 20. That's uh, Allward. Allward, yeah. He's been in a lot of plays there. He's, uh, he's impressed me with his uh, speed and his tenacity. Third and 13. Now, they may go for all of this, or they may just get half of it and go for it on fourth. Two men in the backfield, and uh, the man in motion is Harold. The handoff by Russell, and not uh, much there for a couple of new numbers in there in the backfield. That time it was 26, Adam Chick. So fourth out, and we're going to get a field goal attempt here. 10 to 54 and counting down here in the fourth quarter. And uh, here we get to see the good leg of Robbins. Now Robbins missed that last extra point. By a 35-yard attempt. It is up. It is a good kick. And it is real good because it adds up to three points for Andover. So what was the distance on that? 35 yards. John 35 Brooks said yards. he's got a good leg. He proved it there. Of course, he missed his first extra point earlier, so that's a good makeup for him. Gets his confidence back and ups the score to 30 to nothing. Here Robbins, 35 yards for the three-pointer. Ferndale's a little dismayed. You can see right there that they're not walking back to that uh, sideline with any pop, but I'll tell you what, uh, they didn't get to save some face. They need to put some points on the board. Yeah. Whether it be three, two, six, seven, doesn't matter. They didn't score last week. They need to put some on this week, uh, get some momentum back, uh, potential help next week. There's John Brooks. 
his team looking to go five and one. Hey, uh, my old team, the Frazier uh, High School team, what they call undefeated, the, the, the Frazier Ramblers. <laughs> just kidding. The Frazier Ramblers. The Ramblers, undefeated. Huh? Undefeated. <laughs> They've got a kicker on that team that's been kicking consistently 40-yard field goals. Is he soccer style? 40 and plus, yes. There's a lot of soccer players on the Frazier area. And uh, Frazier is undefeated, so a little bit talking about my alma well, mater here. Mine right. doesn't even exist anymore, so I know how that feels. <laughs> After you left, Bob, what no, did they no. do? <laughs> yeah, Robbins to kick. It's a low line drive taken by Morgan. Morgan finding a little room on the sideline. Morgan at the 40 to the 35 and inside the 35 yard line. A big return by David Morgan. I'll tell you what, that ball, that kick was offside. Hand over was offside, kicking that ball off. Refs didn't call it. But you'll deny it anyway and you'll take it right there. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the return now by David Morgan. I'll Morgan tell you did, what, does he, a nice job in catching the line drive. He made a basketball type play just stopping that ball from going over his head and turns on some speed here. Watch him turn the corner. Once he turns that corner, right here is where he turns on the speed. And there he goes. He says, yeah, I see some open area. Here I go. And he takes it all the way inside the 35-yard line of the Barons. Hard run that time by Gatewood, James Gatewood, on the carry. And he gains you know, maybe a couple on it. This uh, Baron defense is keyed up. They don't want them to get on the board. And I'll tell you one thing. They'll do everything they can to stop them. And the Eagles right now will do anything to get on the board. That is something they need desperately. There's you see John Bezier. And, geez, you got to feel for the guy. They've got to get on the board here. As last week, the Rochester Falcons came here and shut them out. But the Eagles feel like this could be their drive right now. Second and eight. Griffin back to pass. Unloads deep but short. Well, his intended arm was hit. for Morgan. Yeah, Dave, his arm was hit when he went back to yep. throw the ball. And he is uh, grimacing in pain down there. Oh, yeah, he's hurt. He's going to stay in the game. He's a gritty one, though. Yeah, he got up. Oh, well, boy. Yep, look, he's holding that back. Now there, it looks like they're going to send in number 12, who's the backup quarterback, Sean Hoppy, or Hope, excuse me. Now nah, Carlos won't let him get in. He says, uh-uh, I'm staying here. He's tough. There you see the backup quarterback. He was ready to go in. And uh, John Bezier waved it off. Griffin is hit immediately on a blitz. And what can you do on a play like that when you've got Juby Falcon coming right in and you know he's coming off now? Oh, yeah. Look how twisted that brace is now. He's running off. He's, get off the field, son. Oh, man, you played a good game. Can't fault you for doing that. Just come on off, sit down for a while. You've done what, your job. What today. an effort Carlos Griffin has put in tonight, and you hate to see this. After all the effort he's put in for him to come off. Well, those linebackers are just too fast. They're slanting in those holes and not giving them any time to throw. And you can see right here, he gets his back twisted. See how oh, he right lands. there. That ah, had to hurt him. The that, leg. Oh, my. Twisting back. Yeah, that's it for him. He's done for the day. He, uh, if he comes back in, I'd be really surprised. Backup quarterback in there now. Sean back to pass. Overthrows the intended receiver and right in and out of the hands of Feinberg. Oh. There you see Carlos Griffin. Carlos, what a great night you've had. Too bad it had to be so much pain for you, buddy. I'll tell you what. It's the one day you don't need any ice on your back. It's cold enough. And he had the back brace on, and uh, on that last play, he just took uh, too hard of a hit. Well, the play before he did, he got hit in that one, too. Well, that brings off, that was a fourth down, and... Uh, Andover calls timeout now with 8.41 left here in the fourth quarter. 30 to nothing to score. And don't forget to tune in to transition. Every Saturday at 10 p.m. right here on United Artists Cable 63. What's uh, Transition about? Dave? Transition uh, deals with uh, black and white issues uh, here in the city of Detroit and around the city of Detroit and uh, how we can uh, make better situations about uh, some of the bad situations that Sounds are happening. Sounds like an interesting show. There you see the backup quarterback. 
He's getting ready. He's going to be throwing many more passes. I think if they're going to try to get back into this game, they're down 30 to nothing. There's Carlos. He's uh, he's walking around, though. I'll tell you what. I'm really surprised about that. I thought he'd be sitting on the bench and just taking it easy for the rest of the day. Still might be the case. Well, Sean Hoppy is ready. If uh, Carlos can't go in there. Now, Carlos plays defense as well, and you're not going to see him out there on defense, but Hoppy is uh, warming up on the sidelines, as we saw. Here come the Barons now, and flags fly. It may have been delay of game here. Let's see what happens. That or they might not have had enough men on the line of scrimmage. Someone who would call we oh, before. Oh, he forgot his mouth guard. Looked like 13, number 13, Sledge. Ken Sledge forgot his mouth guard. Is that a penalty? Yes, it is. You have to have the mouth Live guard game. in. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the referee kind of hit him in the face mask and said, hey, look what you forgot. Yeah, they want to keep their teeth. I guess that's a good idea. So five yards back now, and it'll be first and 15 for the Barons. Ken Sledge, again, the feet at the bottom of the screen. On the carry and stumbling forward, uh, getting back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a little bit more is Adam Chick on the carry. Well, that's all you'll see for the rest of the day. If they can grind out a few first downs, this game's over. Let's see if we can see the offensive line. Sure enough, number 64 is pulling again. And they do a lot there with their, uh, with their guards and tackles. They try to have them pull to get extra blockers out there. Uh, safety in numbers, more people blocking, the better it is for the backs. And uh, they've been taking advantage of this Ferndale line so far today. Safety in numbers, correct. Uh, there you see John Brooks. John has uh, tricked us. He's put a number 40 in a quarterback. And uh, unfortunately, we're stumped up here in the press box and who it is. And a handoff goes inside and stopped up there. Schultz on the carry, Andy Schultz. And he's not the kind of guy that you want running right up the middle. He's no, got he's, that he's, speed, you can go outside back, with it. Yeah, he's a wing back type player. Well, you should run from the slot, out of the wing, and the wing T. But uh, if, he's, if he's running uh, out of an I or T formation, uh, which he's doing here, he's running as a halfback, uh, he just doesn't have that power. He's only 145 pounds. Two men in the backfield. <laughs> Back to pass, up for grabs. Let's see who's got it. In and out of the hands, and we've got pass interference coming up. In and out of the hands of Sledge. Ken Sledge there, number 13, had it, and it bounced out of his hands. Let's see what the play and the uh, flag is. Let's see what we've got as the refs talk it over. Wait for Mr. Articulate, he'll let us know. Clock has stopped on a number of occasions tonight. A lot of penalties. Offensive holding? Offensive holding. It didn't look like defensive interference. Don't forget to tune in to Front Page Football Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. on United Artists 63. Uh, front Page Football uh, talking to Lions. And uh, let's hear the call down there if we can. Okay. No call. Sign language delay or rather they're, offsetting they're, they're saying penalty. no offsetting penalty so we're gonna bring it up now and it'll be fourth down looks like and about 12 are they gonna bring it back to three third okay. down gotta get that chain crew down there I'm, I'm trusting those guys a little too much well that pass he just kind of threw up for grabs I tell you didn't show me a lot there maybe he'll come back and put a zipper on it <laughs> hand off no they're going downfield, and the pass is short, intended down there for Dan Harrell. Good fake on the handoff, and they see. pressure. Randy St. Laurent came in from the defensive end spot and put him on his back. Whoever that guy is, that's where he threw the ball. Yeah. John Brooks didn't tell us he was going to put this guy in. Now watch it's number 81 here. He'll just demolish him after. Throws off the receiver and boom. And he got a hit immediately as he was unloading, and that is why the pass was short. Fourth down now, and 12, and a punting down. That's only the second time that Andover has had to punt tonight. Uh-oh. And a punt, or the snap is high. This could be point. This could be big. Where do they get him? 
Down at, uh, well, near, near the goal line. Near the goal line. Yeah. One yard line, looks like. Half yard line. Oh, I don't know. What a break for Ferndale. Here we go. There's the snap over his head. And he stopped six points right here, but uh, that could be temporary because here comes the onslaught. He goes down, and Ferndale's ball, first and goal at the half-yard line. Is there a half-yard line? Absolutely. I just said there was. Is there? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I believe you. Close enough. Inside the five-yard Inside the one-yard line. All right. All right. I'll live with that. <laughs> there it is. Second man through. Allward. No. Who was it? Yeah, that's him. Allward got it. He just dropped it once he got in there and said... I've got it. Well, that's their first score in the last two games. Let's take a look. Fake to the first man through, and the tailback gets it. Bill Allward getting in. I just didn't see the ball in his hands, but he just well, let go of it right there. Kind of just kind of flipped it back. <laughs> this is cool. I've done this before. And there he is, number 20. Yeah, it must be a relative. I thought maybe I saw, like, you know, some sort of Bible passage after that, you know, with a little quote. Oh, yeah, like they usually do at the, yeah, uh, the pro the guy games. with the fuzzy green hair or orange hair or whatever and a wig. Is he still around? I don't know. Somewhere around town. Bill uh, Allward, nonetheless, has answered the prayers of the Eagles. And let's see if they may pick up two here. Oh! Just in and out of the hands of number 22 down there. And that was Schaffner, James Schaffner, the wide receiver. But they pick up six points on the one-yard run by Allward. Well, let's see here if it was a fake. It was definitely not a fake. They just dropped the ball. The holder dropped Griffin the ball. Is that in was there. Griffin. And uh, he goes back to throw. And it was a decent throw, a little high. Had a chance at the two points. Didn't get it, but nonetheless, it doesn't matter. Unless they come up with some big scores and fans. Well, there's somebody down on the field, down there in the end zone. One of the Barons. Looks like he got a little wind knock out of him. That's typically what they do when you have your legs raised like that. I know it's happened to me only once, but it did happen. Somebody knocked the wind out of you, or did you uh, do it to yourself? No, freshman here? year playing the University of Detroit, running down on a kickoff. Guy named Bill Jones who went on to play for University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, nice six foot three linebacker, caught me blindside, and uh, I ran off the field though. I didn't want to lay there. I ran off the field, and then fell down. <laughs> Bill Jones, huh? I'll never forget it. Isn't that the name you used checking into the hotel? Oh, on your, no, no, no. On your no, honeymoon? No, no. no. Okay. I thought maybe you told me a story no, no, like that no, before no. somewhere. There is uh, Juby. 32, Juby Falcon, who has had uh, an outstanding game. Well, he's limping, though, so that could be a little more serious than we originally thought. So it could be an ankle or a foot injury. There he is, 5'9", 177, Junior. I'll tell you what, he's really impressed me here today. Not only uh, at his linebacker spot, but he showed me some speed in the backfield. Good player, good all-round player. See if we can find it, see an offside, onside kick here. Here to okay. kick, Thomas Davis will do the kicking, and they're looking for the onside kick on the far side of the field. Here it is. They get a pop and uh, did not go 10 yards, so the Barons will take it. And 6 17 and counting down here in the fourth quarter. Now remember, Dave, if it doesn't go 10 yards, as long as it's touched by the offensive team. And if it which, bounces, if right. It now bounces, if it bounces out it of his here, hands, it bounces out, that it's ball, anybody's ball. Exactly. Doesn't have to go 10 yards. Choose the offensive team touches it. All right, it's got to go 10 yards without the offensive team Which they've done here tonight, too. Right. Not for them to pick it up. Has. Lions got away with one of those last week. Yep. Where didn't go 10 yards. Come back, yeah. Yep. And that helped him. Here's a handoff and a big run. Busting out to the outside and finally dragged out of bounds is number 26, Adam Chick. Getting him is number 11, Matt Vineyard. Offensive line is just showing a little more grit here. Staying with their blocks. Of course, the guards pouring, opening up a lot of time. Well, Ferndale's got a drive. Uh, Dave, go ahead, give it to us. Well, uh, it took uh, one play. Seven seconds, and a uh, total of two yards on that one. And it what happened was, to the uh, half a yard? It was, uh, well, I thought it was inside the one, but it wasn't. It was two yards, and we'll give it to them. All right. They deserve it. And that was Bill Allward with the two-yard run. Eagles call a timeout down on the field. 
And with the break in the action, 5.47 left here in the fourth quarter. We'll be back with more right after this. I'm Lomas Brown of the Detroit Lions. Can any of us turn our backs on the cries of these innocent victims? I don't think we will. I know I can. When we give to the United Way, we're reaching out a hand to the smallest victims of drugs and the violence and the suffering they breathe. It doesn't do any good to cry for them, but it will help if you give, if you care. When you give to the United Way, you give all kids a fighting chance. Back here at Hanson Field, where the Barons just picked up a first down after the timeout. As uh, guess who, number 34, Worthland, had another 10-yard run. Hey, we get to see this one. Here we go, straight dive play, number 34, up the middle for the first down. The reason they called the timeout, nine guys on the field, they need 11. Yep. Well, we've seen Worthland do that run over and over again. We could have played that replay of any number of carries that he's had. Maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> this time, Schultz, Andy Schultz he's with gone. the blazing speed, oh, but we've no. got a flag on the play. You can see how fast he is. Three flags on the It's play. not a mistake. I'll tell you, that kickoff return was not a mistake by this kid. He is fast. What do you think, Clip? Hold? Number of things. It could be any one of those things. All of the above. They're pointing, uh, you know which way. Where's that famous song that the uh, Trojans? Uh, no. Who does that? The uh, Florida State. Oh, Seminoles. Florida State. That's who does that. There you go. Here it goes. He shows a lot of speed again. There he coming out of the wing back. This is what we talked about earlier. He needs to come out of that position to be effective. And he takes up. Oh, there it is, right there. Yeah, there was a push in the back. Yeah. Good and call. There's the flag. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. He's running out of the tailback position. He doesn't have a lot of uh, weight, and uh, that's going to limit his effectiveness out of the backfield. But when he runs out of the slot back, wing back type area, he can uh, definitely get a lot of uh, use out of him. You saw Sean Hoppy warming up on the sidelines, but uh, Griffin is also warming up down there too. First down and 18, roughly 20 it should be with 4.45 left. Look at this. Brad, Brad Schneider. Schneider. I don't believe that. I haven't seen that play in years. It's like the fridge. <laughs> hey. Well, they say Brad here is 5'9", 234, and he's all of it. Let's, Let's watch him playing fullback Whoop. here. He holds on to the ball. He says, well, I'll run into this guy. I'll knock him over. Let's take five, six of these guys to tackle me, but I'll go down. Usually he's trying to dish out the punishment. This yep. time he, uh, he the has bridge to take is back it. in the backfield. Yep. Let's see if they give to him again. This time it's the handoff to Schultz, and the, he uh, is hit in the backfield by the Eagles, and they stop him cold on that one. Well, they're doing the right thing. They're going with their uh, their key players, people who have done provided for them. Schultz again with the 80-yard touchdown run earlier. And had the last touchdown run of 30 yards called back because of a push. And I'll tell you what, he was in, didn't need that block. Think so? Absolutely. One back in the backfield, and now in motion goes Dan Harold. This time it's an inside touchdown. hand off to Chick. Yeah, there are no flags down. Touchdown. Adam Chick. Counter gap trap. I like that play. Fake one way, gives the other. Broke open a wide hole. 18 yard run by Adam Chick and the Barons are on the board again. Yep, somebody's cheering, there's the touchdown club. Here we go again. Now watch, watch this hole open up right here. There's the counter, coming right off tackle. Nice play, excellent execution. The score 36 to 6 now. And uh, the Barons a little uh, trouble on the extra point. 
trying to get situated, and we're going to have a delay of game. No, they're going to call timeout before they get the delay of game call. Well, that's their third timeout, so we don't have to worry about any more of those uh, this half. And aren't you happy? Yes, sir. That's <laughs> <laughs> the first time I've seen a team up I'll by 30 what, points called three timeouts. To I make you feel it. better, your daughter's going to feel better than, yeah, than, than you will. It. Don't forget to tune into Oakland Forum. Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. and then again on Friday at 9 p.m. if you miss it on Thursday with all your favorite shows on, Bob, like The Simpsons and stuff like that. I love that show. You're going to miss great. that, so, so tune us in on Friday if you miss us on Thursday. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. A couple of local beauties right there. Hi, Bob. <laughs> well, they're having fun. The team isn't playing that good, but nonetheless, uh, hey, let's have fun. The Eagle cheerleaders. They have six points to cheer about. They uh, got in the end zone. And that is uh, a relief for the uh, Eagles defense. They just had their, rather the offense, they had to get in that uh, end zone as the extra point is good. Yeah, that uh, big two-yard drive really made a big difference here. Well, the big turnover helped and then we're getting that back. You know, the, the Eagles, uh, hopefully that'll uh, spur something on for next game and uh, for John Bazier. Well, statistics are starting to pile up here for the Avondale Barons. Uh, second half rushing uh, for number 26, Adam Chick, 55 yards on only four carries, and uh, he got that last Maybe touchdown. he hasn't been in there that much. No, he hasn't. But then again, a lot of yards can be picked up in these last quarters as the Andover Touchdown Club has another one there, 37-6 the score, with 325 left in the game. I'd like to see the uh, Eagles just come up with a nice sustained drive right now so that the uh, Eagles can have something positive going into the next game. Well, that's a good call, but I'll tell you what, you're down by 30 points, 31 points. Uh, you might as well check your passing attack out. you got nothing to lose at this yeah, point. You might as well. Yeah. Huh? Well, Griffin was airing it out pretty good. He had some good passes. He did. A couple were dropped, a couple big penalties. At untimely times. Here's Matt Robbins to kick off with 3.25 left in the game. Let's see if he kicks to the spot down here in the right corner. Oh, down the field this time. And it is his favorite man, David Morgan. Morgan this time can't spring loose. He got inside the 35-yard line last time, if you'll remember. This time out to the 25 of the Eagles. The scoring drive for Andover. Five plays, three minutes, and this has been their longest drive of the night. 47 yards total. Yeah, the shortest was 12 seconds. Yeah. I remember that. That's right. But the Eagles had one even shorter, seven seconds. That's true. So uh, if they're uh, competing in that category, then the Eagles uh, are... Uh, Look at the scoreboard. Up there, well. They're moving in the offensive line that time. Five-yard penalty. Penalty... Played game here, Dave. Yes, it has been right from the beginning. And this will knock him back. That's another thing that's been eating up the time, so don't get mad at us up I'm here. I'm not mad. I'm having fun. Okay. Just like the refs down there. Let's take a look at the, uh, see if we can see the movement. Right there, yep. left guard. Yep. Left guard up, and he's going to go back down. But the refs caught it, and so did the defense of Andover, and that knocked him back five yards. First and 15 now for the Eagles. And the clock starts, and starts winding down, 2.40. That's good news <laughs> for Bob. <laughs> back to pass. Is Hoppy, and he unloads downfield into his bench, intended down there for number 32, Alan Griffin. Well, I guess he figured he saw so many of his own players down there, somebody's going to catch it. <laughs> Fortunately, nobody did. Hey, good, upper, good, good odds that time. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, you don't understand that. I just quit picking on him. I know. Well, I'm not picking on him. You know? <laughs> Didn't know who he's throwing the ball to. He's got 20 guys he, in there. He knew he had. He knew he had 32 open, but uh, just ran out of room. And then a second real estate. down, second down and 15. Sean Hoppy, the quarterback. Two men in the backfield. Two receivers split. Hoppy back to pass. Has some pressure as a screen and overthrows his intended receiver, number 35, and that is Burl, James Burl. Looks like you rushed that one a little bit. Of course, I probably would too if you see three guys running at you. Here he goes, looking left, 
turns right, 73's in his face, so he gets rid of it a little early, a little overthrown. Well, he set it up well. He turned the other way. Nobody was looking over here, but he just overthrew his man. Yeah, just an experience that time, Dave. You know, just Stop a matter of yeah. more times you're able to do that, uh, more comfortable you'll feel. 226 left in the game. I formation in the backfield. Again, pro set with the receivers. Hoppy back to pass. He's got pressure this way, and this time gets Burrow. Jim Burrow breaking it outside, and finally the Andover defense catches up to him. Well, he gained about 10. And but he gained, stayed in uh, bounds. Did he stay in bounds? Yes. That's good news for you, bad news for the Eagles. There's this time to do the same down. play again, but they executed it good. And here's the difference. He took his time to throw the ball. Excellent throw. Now watch this. He breaks a nice tackle right here. Yeah. 73 comes back across the field and tries to make the tackle. Doesn't make it. Burrow takes the ball upfield with a decent run, short of the first down. Fourth down and five now. And a punting down for the Eagles. Vineyard with another good punt. Had some good punts tonight. Fair catch called. And this is the first time we've had a fair catch actually caught. On yes. A punt. yes, that's true. Things and are no getting penalty better. flag. No penalty. So the Barons get it with 134 left. And a chance to run out the clock. 37 to 6. It has been pretty much all Andover. And uh, pretty much a passing combination of Russell to Phillips. He scored uh, back in the first quarter, the first drive, 7 to nothing. They uh, picked it up on a uh, turnover. And uh, scored again to make it 14 to nothing. Another pass play. Look at this run on a first down carry. And the Barons just keep coming at you with more and more backs. What do the Lions call it when they put all their guys up there? Their, Let's take a look. Their bull offense? I don't know. But I'll tell you what. This is the fridge play. That's what we'll call it. Straight dive over, over the center. And a gain of about six yards. Brad Schneider listed as a tackle both offensively and defensively. Said I wanted to carry the ball this game, and he is. This time, the handoff goes to the tailback. He picks up the first down. That is Valdivieso. Valdivieso uh, starting back, and uh, this time getting in there, getting some uh, action. Actually, he is a, uh, a flanker and uh, used to uh, come around, and he has been swinging around in motion for most of the night. 35 seconds and counting down now left in the game. First and 10 for the Barons. Back to pass. Has some time. Unloads downfield and just through the hands of Dan Harold. Now, I don't know if Harold stretched out enough for that one. Ball was right in his numbers. Uh, Should have caught the ball. He uh, kind of hit himself after that. John I'll tell you Major what, I'm really surprised at throwing the ball this time. He makes a nice throw. Show me something with his arm here. But I'll tell you what, I'm really surprised at throwing the ball at this point in the game. See it? Just hit him in the hands. I think this is the point where they just have some guys in there that uh, wouldn't normally play these positions. I don't think you're going to normally see Schneider in there at fullback or uh, 40 in a quarterback. But uh, they're, they're still executing well in there. Schneider with a carry for about three yards and a flag flies after the play, after the whistle. So we may have some extracurricular activity. Well, the time is gone here in the game. But it can't end on a penalty, so let's it see what it is. It can't end on a defensive penalty. Can't end on an offensive penalty. Well, the refs are saying it's it's academic. And uh, more than likely probably is. So uh, they, they walk the off the field. For, isn't it? Academics? Academics. Ac -ac -ac. That's what we're here for. And that'll end the game as uh, the Andover Barons dominate. 37 to 6, the final score here at Ferndale High School. Not a good night for the Eagles, but uh, John Bazier talking it over with John Brooks. He's saying, why'd you throw that pass so late? I don't understand it. <laughs> Man, you're up by 30 points. What do you want? Well, the uh, Eagles will come back next week as uh, they put six on the board. John Bazier, tough, uh, tough season for the Eagles this year as they drop to one and five. The final score here, 37 to 6. We'll be back to wrap things up for you from Fern Ferndale High School right after these messages. Stay with us. When we learn... 
The world is rich with possibilities, and school is where our dreams take flight. A great novel gets its start. A president they call us. A language is discovered. A new generation of scientists explore. United Artists Cable is building a partnership with America's schools through an innovative project, Cable in the Classroom, sending programs designed exclusively for the classroom, providing new data and software tools. Teachers, parents, and United Artists Cable together, enriching the tools of education. A commitment to this community that each of us at United Artists Cable is proud to be part of, because excellence in education benefits every one of us. Brought to you by United Artists Cable, partners in Cable in the Classroom and contributing to the tools of education. Dave Zorn along with Bob Griglack to wrap things up from Ferndale High School as Andover and the Barons 37 points, the Ferndale Eagles 6. And uh, we'll take a look at some of the statistics for you. Uh, most of it going Andover's way, really. 80, 185 uh, passing, 185 rushing. Uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, very balanced attack. On the other side, Ferndale really couldn't do much against the uh, defensive Andover, and mistakes cost them early. Well, John Brooks wanted a uh, uh, balanced attack offensively, offensively for Andover. He got it. You can see it right there. Turnovers, uh, three for Andover, and one turnover left to the only score for Ferndale. Uh, punt, uh, snap on a punt over the kicker's head, and they got the ball on the two-yard line and ran it in for the next play. Uh, time possession, you can see Ferndale up ahead 25 uh, minutes compared to 22 for Andover. Uh, that's just because they had the ball a little longer and had more uh, opportunities to run the ball. Yeah, balanced out towards the end. Let's take a look at some of the leaders for Andover. Uh, uh, Worthland, uh, a lot of first down carries, and uh, he picked up 51, but it was pretty balanced all the way across. He probably had a, a number of players gaining right around the 50-yard mm. mark. Passing, of course, it was Russell throwing 7 uh, of 15 for 185 yards, and that is uh, pretty much what he's been throwing. And uh, receiving, it was Phillips with six receptions for 182 yards, and he uh, cashed in on three touchdowns. Next week, don't forget to tune in, we'll be at uh, Royal Oak Dondero, where the Rochester Adams Highlanders will be visiting the Dondero Oaks. That's Saturday and Monday at 7 p.m. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Join us again next week from Dondero, and uh, we will see you then from Ferndale High School. For Bob Griglack and all of us here at United Artist Sports, thanks for watching.